They say there's a big link between humour and dark crime. Certainly the police use plenty of gallows humour in their work. So is it any surprising that a former stand-up comic has now become one of our most popular crime novelists? Mark Billingham, author of the Tom Thorne series, made into a highly successful television series with David Morrissey playing the lead character. Welcome to the author's studio. Read and be lucky. That's two writing tips, but you know, yeah, work hard, be lucky, read a lot. Oh, that, I, yeah, I've got a soft spot. I think everybody has a soft spot for their first book, although most writers I know and respect would not think that was their best book because you hope you get a lot better. So Sleepyhead, which is my first book, you know, it's the book that I, you know, that got me published. So yeah, I'll always have a soft spot for that one. Um, I write in my office, pretty much the only place I write. Um, Normally at night because the house is quiet, kids are in bed and it's dark outside so I'm not looking out of the window going, oh look there's some squirrels or look at that lovely bird, I'm you know staring out into darkness and because most of the stuff I'm writing is fairly dark, night time suits me best. Yikes, uh, several, everything from The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes through to The Maltese Falcon. But the two books that, that made me go, oh my God, this is what books can do, were Jaws and The Godfather, which I read back to back one summer when I was about 13, and I'd never read books like that, you know, that just knocked you back in your seat. Also, they both had dirty bits in, which I think is quite exciting when you're a 13-year-old boy. <laughs> I, book-wise, I don't have a guilty pleasure. You shouldn't be guilty about reading anything. Um, I have a lot of guilty pleasures to, musically, which are usually very, very cheesy country and western songs with kind of choirs and strings that just make me cry like a, like a big girl. <laughs> Um, I, I have one ritual, which is that I always go and buy the same notebook uh, from Ryman's The Stationer, uh, which is the book I use to, just to note down odd lines of dialogue that occur to me or little ideas. And I should do the sensible thing, which is to go and buy like ten of them, because one day I'll go to buy them and they'll have stopped making them and that will be the end of my writing career. But yeah, that's kind of the only ritual I have, is buying the same notebook. Um, I always wrote something. I always wrote, you know, stories at school, um, bad plays, bad poems, bad songs, all sorts of things. But that, writing that story at school, you know, what I did on my holidays, and then being asked to come to the front of the class and read it out to the class, I can still remember the buzz I got, the huge buzz I got from doing that. And I think that's essentially what I'm still doing. <laughs> I, I don't really, I'm not a big planner. I kind of try and come up with an opening. I have some kind of opening at the end of which there are lots of questions. Who are these people? Why are they doing these things? Um, and they're questions I need to know the answer to. And if I need to know the answer to them, hopefully the, the reader will be engaged enough to want to know too and to, and to keep turning the pages. There's no big plan. You know, I have a whiteboard at home that I put up in my office thinking it was going to be used for planning and all it says is get dressed buy cheese write novel that's all it says <laughs> I, I, I don't really think there is one a lot of writers get get worked up about being asked where they get their ideas from but I think it is something people are fascinated by and the simple question is you get them from wherever and whenever you can get them you know people want to tell you stuff because you're a writer of crime novels they're always trying to tell you dark stories things that have happened to their friends and neighbors there isn't really anything you know, if you're doing an event uh, and people have paid money to go and see you, they can ask you anything they want. Yeah, yeah, but no, nothing like a day's work. I've lost a day's work. And that was a, you know, horrendous panic. But actually, by the time you start trying to remember what you'd written and go through it again, you can get most of it back. And actually, it ends up being better than it probably would have been. But I, you know, I know stories of people who've lost entire novels. And even, even just saying that is making me <laughs> quake a little bit. Um, so now I, I back up everything. I mean, almost at the end of every day, I send myself the work in progress. I send it to my agent. I do all those safety things. So, um, no, I can't imagine how terrible that would be. I hope you've enjoyed listening to Mark Billingham. And if you've got any dark tales, gallows humour stories, pop them in the comment box below and I'll be commenting too.